Quantization means discrete, such as one, two, three, four, etc. They are not continuous, such as all the real numbers between one and two. Here we are talking about the quantization of electrons' orbits in a hydrogen atom. The idea is that electrons in an atom cannot just take any arbitrary orbit; they are only allowed in certain predetermined orbits. Correspondingly, they can only have certain predetermined energy levels, not any arbitrary energy levels. But why? Why can't an electron just orbit in any way as it wants to? That's the topic of this video. In the early 1910s, the common model of atom was Rutherford's atom model, as shown in this picture. Rutherford's atom model is like the solar system, with a positively charged nucleus at the center and a negatively charged electrons circling around the nucleus. In this model, electrons can take any orbit; they can continuously move closer to or further away from the nucleus. However, this model had two serious flaws. The first problem is called the spiral to death problem. According to Maxwell's equations, electromagnetic power is radiated away by a charged particle moving with an acceleration. In Rutherford's atom model, since electrons are in circular motion, which is a type of acceleration, electrons should radiate electromagnetic waves and repeatedly lose their energy and drop into the nucleus in a spiral orbit. But this is obviously not true. The second problem is a continuous spectrum problem. When the hydrogen atom was heated to an elevated temperature, scientists observed that the hydrogen emitted light at only discrete certain wavelengths. However, according to Rutherford's model, electrons would fall to the nucleus in a continuous spiral orbit and emit light with continuum wavelengths. So, how did scientists solve this problem? In 1913, Niels Bohr proposed a solution to this dilemma. So let's look at Bohr's hydrogen atom model. Bohr hypothesized that the hydrogen atom electron was restricted to certain well-defined orbits. In other words, Bohr assumed that the orbiting electron could have only certain values of angular momentum or energy level. This is called quantization. Quantization basically means discrete, such that a physical quantity can take some certain predetermined values, but not continuous or arbitrary values. But why? What is the reason that electrons' orbits have to be quantized? Bohr had no answer. He just hypothesized that, that was the case. It was De Broglie who solved this burning question in 1924. At that time, scientists knew that light behaves like particles sometimes and waves some other times. This is called light's wave-particle duality. De Broglie proposed that not only light is duality, but that all matter are also wave-particle duality. This means that all matter can show wave-like behavior. For example, a beam of electrons can be diffracted just like a beam of light or a water wave. This is called the matter wave. Matter waves are a central part of the theory of quantum mechanics. The De Broglie wavelength is wavelength lambda associated with a massive particle and is related to its momentum p through the Planck constant h. Based on De Broglie's matter wave theory, electrons' orbits must meet the standing wave condition. The orbit's length is an integer multiple of the electron's wavelength. This is represented in these two pictures. The first picture shows that a constructive interference makes the orbit possible and stable. This happens when the orbit length equals an integer n times electron's wavelength. n could be one, two, three, and so on. The second picture shows that when this condition is not met, destructive interference will make the orbit unstable or not even exist. Now, with the electron limited to certain orbits or equivalently certain energies, it follows from the Bohr model that the transition from a higher n to a lower n orbit will release quantized energies of light. This explains the observation of emitted light at only certain discrete wavelengths. Hydrogen atom has only one electron. On the other hand, The energy level scheme in semiconductor materials such as silicon is much more complex because they have multiple electrons. The silicon atom has 14 electrons, and the germanium atom has 28 electrons. As shown in this picture, 10 electrons of a silicon atom occupy very deep lying energy levels and are tightly bound to the nucleus. The binding is so strong that these 10 electrons remain essentially unaffected during chemical reactions or atom-to-atom -atom interactions. So the combination of these 10 electrons and the nucleus is called the core of the atom. The remaining four electrons in a silicon atom are bound much more weakly and are strongly involved in chemical reactions. These four electrons are called the valence electrons.